Ooh, that's a that's a tough picture there. That area that has the insula right there, you can see the precuneus area roughly where it is, uh, up in the brain there, the precuneus. The anterior part of it is where uh, the human self lies, the circuits, to let me know that I'm me, where my values, morals, and so on. Just behind it, just behind it is my narratives. A lot of my life stories and memories are there. But all those different factors there, the visual cortex, the auditory cortex, send information to that insula. That fusiform gyrus on there is where I judge faces, where I read faces, I read eyes, and so on. It throws information when I meet someone. The, uh, the right temporal, the RTPJ, uh, the right temporal parietal junction, is an area where I go into other people's minds and have thoughts about their thoughts. Uh, all this information, the thalamus takes information from the outside and throws it up to the insula. The insula now has to make, and it takes information from the hippocampus and the other places, it has to make a quick subjective evaluation. A subjective evaluation, meaning that how I feel for that introceptive system is throwing information at it, the effect system, and quickly it has to come up with some sort of subjective of guess of what's going on in my real world. Sometimes as fast as a second and a half, or a tenth of a second. That's pretty fast to me. So it's not always, it's guessing. It's guessing from all that information. And then it throws it up to the front of my brain, and it analyzes it, and they talk back and forth, and might come up with another uh, perception. And I make a prediction off of that. And depending on how many concepts I have in there. It's quite complicated, but that's what the insula does. It comes up with a subjective evaluation or prediction of uh, what's going on in my world. And it could do that every 125 milliseconds. We're one of the rare animals when you take a look at that anterior and posterior cingulate. That allows me and with my introspective system and reflective system to actually go into deep thought. But think about this. Us being mammals and primates, we're the only ones that can do this because of the fact if I free my human self from worrying about the external environment, if I free my human self from worrying about the external environment, I can become prey to anything out there in my external environment. That's why you, if someone's in deep thought, reading a book, watching a movie, whatever, if you could sneak up behind them, they're no longer concerned about the external environment. You could scare the daylights out of them. Could you imagine a deer coming to a, a pond and then having deep thoughts and going into daydreaming and wondering about this and that and going into deep thought and was not concerned about the external environment, what would happen to it or any animal? We're the only animal that can get away with that, but it also leaves us vulnerable to attack because of the fact we're in such deep thought. So there's advantages and disadvantages to it. And that's why you want to get a lot of these people will go to a peaceful place where the brain no, no longer has to worry about survival or a limited amount of survival.